In this video, I'm going to teach you how to name ethers using both common nomenclature and IUPAC nomenclature. Common nomenclature only works when naming ethers that are very small and simple, such as these ethers down here, very small alkyl groups without branching, um, things along those lines. To use common nomenclature, we simply name each one of the alkyl groups attached to the oxygen of the ether. We name them in alphabetical order, and then we just add the word ether at the end. So this gives us three separate words in the name of the ether. Let's take a look at this very first example. This particular ether has two alkyl groups. It has a two carbon chain, which is an ethyl, and it has a one carbon, which is a methyl, and we just simply alphabetize those, ethyl, methyl, and then we say ether at the end. And again, this is a common name, it's not systematic, um, so there aren't any numbers, uh, we're not following IUPAC rules at all. For an ether that has two identical uh, alkyl groups, like this one right here that has two methyls, Rather than saying methyl methyl ether, we say dimethyl ether, di being the prefix for two. Here's a couple more examples that we can try. This ether has two ethyl groups. So instead of saying ethyl ethyl ether, we would say diethyl ether. <clears throat> and again, these are, each one of these is its own word. So this is two separate words, um, three separate words if we have two different groups. Diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is commonly referred to just as ether. So if you hear somebody saying ether, just ether all by itself, they are almost always going to be referring to diethyl ether. It's the most common ether that we use in lab. And then last but not least, this ether has a two carbon chain that's an ethyl, and this is a three carbon chain, which is a propyl. Putting them in alphabetical order, we have ethyl, propyl, ether. Three words. If our ether is larger or branching, or if it has additional functional groups present, then we cannot use common nomenclature, and we have to use IUPAC nomenclature. Now with IUPAC nomenclature, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that the IUPAC system does not recognize the ether as its own functional group. So um, when we're naming an ether molecule using the IUPAC system, we don't consider the ether functional group to have anything to do with the largest parent chain. In fact, we um, just name the ether as a substituent on the, the rest of the molecule. It's kind of difficult to explain. So for example, when we're looking at this molecule right here, we, uh, IUPAC does not recognize this as a, a functional group that's worthy of its own particular type of nomenclature. So this first molecule is named as a two carbon chain, ethane, with this substituent attached to it. Uh, and so this is, like I said, it's a little bit unusual. Our second example, this molecule would be a two carbon chain and this would be the substituent attached. So again, um, with using the, the IUPAC system, we are picking the oxygen and then one of its alkyl groups to be named as a substituent on the other alkyl group. So here we're gonna practice again, finding the carbon chain and finding the substituent. We know that the oxygen is going to be part of the substituent. We know that either this is going to be the parent chain or this is going to be the parent chain. And of course, as you know, we wanna pick the largest parent chain. So this will be our parent chain right here and this will be the substituent on that parent chain. Let's practice again. Here is our oxygen. Our parent chain is either gonna be this right here, or it's gonna be this right here. And again, we always wanna pick the largest parent chain. So there's, there's our parent chain, and this is our substituent. And we've got one more example. Here's our oxygen. Where's our parent chain? The parent chain is either gonna be this alkyl group or it's gonna be this alkyl group. We want the largest possible parent chain. So there's the parent chain. And this is the substituent. The oxygen and the smaller alkyl group are the substituent. 
So to name the ethers using the IUPAC system, you're going to just name the portions that I put in the blue boxes, you're gonna be naming them as substituents on these parent chains. They are named as alkoxy substituents. So, um, and that's notation that we've used before. Like if you have an OCH3, we call that meth oxy, meth for one carbon and oxy for the oxygen. If you have OCH2, CH3, we would call that eth oxy. And we, we locate them and name them the same way we would name any other type of substituent. So looking at this example right here, um, which is this first molecule right here, we said that this was the parent chain. It's a two carbon chain. We said that this was our substituent. This as a substituent with a one carbon and an oxygen, this substituent is methoxy. We wanna number our parent chain so that our substituent is on the smallest possible number. So our substituent is on carbon number one and that makes this methoxyethane. Um, let's try this example right here, which is this molecule. So we said that this was our parent chain and this was our substituent. We wanna number our parent chain to give the substituent the smallest possible number. So our substituent is on carbon number one. Our substituent is a two carbon alkoxy group. That is ethoxy, eth for two carbons, oxy because it is an ether, one ethoxy ethane. That would be its IUPAC name. As you can imagine, the common names are way easier to use than the IUPAC names. Here is one that is a little bit trickier, so I've got the name on here for you. Um, we've already identified the longest parent chain as this guy right here. Um, that's this molecule. Now remember, when we're numbering our parent chain, our goal is to give the high priority substituent the lowest possible number. And in this molecule, we have an alkane, which is a high priority substituent. This substituent is low, like tied with halogens. It is not important at all. So when we number this carbon chain, we want to number it like this because our goal, again, is to give that double bond the smallest possible number. Our substituent is on carbon number four. It's a two carbon ethoxy group and so the name for this molecule putting the the name of the substituent first for ethoxy and then we have a five carbon chain which is a pentane but the presence of the double bond makes it a pentene and we have to say the location of the double bond which is carbon number one for ethoxy one pentene we've got two more examples um, this one which is this molecule right here we said that our longest carbon chain was the five-membered ring. This is our substituent. This is a one carbon alkoxy, so this is methoxy. With a cyclic, we get to choose which carbon is carbon number one. With no other variables here, we're going to put the methoxy group on carbon number one. Um, with a cyclic, when we only have one substituent, we don't need to say number one. We could just say methoxy cyclopentane for this molecule. And then here is our last molecule. We have a ring. This is our substituent, a two carbon alkoxy. This is ethoxy. Remember when we're numbering, our goal is to give the high priority functional group the smallest number. This is our high priority functional group, the alkene. So that means that we want to make one of these carbons number one, one of these carbons. So one of our options for numbering would be to go like this. Um, as we number the alke alkenes, we always have to number them one, two. So we couldn't go one, two, three, four. We've got to give both of those carbons and the alkene the smallest possible number. So if we go this way, one, two, three, our, our substituent is on carbon number four. If we number the other direction, so one, two, three, four, five, that puts our substituent on carbon number five. So the blue numbers are better than the pink numbers. I'm gonna erase the pink numbers. We'll use the blue numbers. Um, still, our goal is to give the alkene the smallest possible number. Once we've given the alkene the smallest possible number, then we want to give the um, substituents the smallest possible numbers. So for this, we have our ethoxy on carbon number four, 
four ethoxy cyclohexene. And we don't need to say the one for cyclohexene, although maybe that feels a little bit weird. So maybe we say four ethoxy one cyclohexene.